Hi, I'm Lucy from So Essential and today we're taking a closer look at the Janome 5060 QDC, just one of hundreds of sewing machines available on our site, soessential.co.uk. At So Essential, we pride ourselves on using our expert sewing knowledge to help you find the perfect machine for you. And that's why we've created this video, but we're also always available by phone and email too. The 5060 QDC is exceptional in terms of value for money. It's the cheapest machine in the Janome range to include the automatic thread snips, which cut your threads at the touch of a button. Trust me, once you've tried it, you'll never want to go back. It also includes a whopping 10 sewing machine presser feet as standard. And then other headline features include 60 stitches, six of which are different style buttonholes, a free extension table and hard cover, a start stop button so you can sew without the foot control, needle up down for precision and accuracy, a target stitch or fixed stitch so that you can secure your stitches without having to reverse and a sliding speed control so you can sew at your own pace. I'll pop a link in the corner of the screen so you can take a closer look at the machine and purchase it on our site. Later in the video we'll have a look at what's in the box but now let's take a closer look at this machine and what it can do for you. Threading the machines very straightforward. The first thing you need to do is start by winding your bobbin. So place a reel of thread on the spool pin and then put one of the spool caps on to secure it. You'll get several different sizes of these with the machine for different size reels of thread. Take the loose end of your thread round the metal disc on top of the machine, so around the back and to the front, and you should feel it click into place. And if you pull the thread, you'll notice there's some tension on it, and you know it's through the tension disc then. Then feed the end of the thread through one of the holes on the top of one of the bobbins, and put your bobbin on the bobbin winder. Just slot that down onto there and then push the bobbin winder across to the right to engage it and then just hold the loose end of your thread and put your foot on the foot control to do a few rotations to get started. You can use the thread cutters on the bottom of the bobbin winder to snip your thread so if you just bring it through there and just pull that will snip the end of the thread for you or you might want to just use a pair of scissors to snip that loose end and then once you've done that you carry on winding in the usual way. You'll also notice a little indentation on top of the machine here and that's for your second spool pin that comes with the machine and that gives you the ability to sew with a twin needle creating two parallel lines of stitching. To insert the bobbin there's a handy reference diagram here which shows you which direction the thread should go in. Remove the cover place the bobbin in the bobbin case and another really easy way to remember it is that the thread should always come down the left hand side so it will form a letter P. Place the bobbin in the bobbin case and make sure the thread goes through the notch at the front of the bobbin case then bring it up and over where it says number one down here to number two and there's a thread cutter there which will cut off any excess thread then you can just replace the bobbin case cover and start sewing. There's no need to bring the bobbin thread up on this machine. To thread the needle, firstly, make sure the foot's in the up position. You'll find the lever under the arm of the machine and you can raise the foot there. And then you also want to bring the take-up lever up. So turn the hand wheel towards you and you'll see the take-up lever appear here. Take the loose end of your thread and follow the numbered thread guides round the back of that one on the top of the machine, down here, down the front of the machine, back up and around. And then when you get to the take-up lever, you want to bring your thread from right to left and just make sure it's secured through that little metal hook. Then continue down the front of the machine. To finish threading the needle, Take the thread behind the thread guide here and the one on the front of the needle bar. 
and then you can just insert the thread through the, the eye of the needle from front to back. If you want to use the needle threader, just lower the foot and press needle up down twice. That will bring your needle into the highest position and then you can use this lever here to bring the needle threader down into the correct position and just bring the thread around the relevant thread guides and across the front of the needle then let go and pull the loop of thread at the back of the needle to bring the thread all the way through. Raise the foot again and just pass the thread under the foot and to the back of the machine. The machine will automatically be set up for a straight stitch. So when you're ready to start sewing, just lower the presser foot onto the fabric. I should just mention here as well that you can use the extra presser foot lift if you need to. So if you push the lever in the other direction, if you push it up, you can see I'm able to create even more space between the foot and the fabric. And that's useful if you're working on a really bulky project or bulky fabric. But to start sewing, just lower the presser foot and then if you hold down the reverse button, this machine will sew backwards. So I can just do a few stitches backwards to secure my stitching. And then if I let go and put my foot on the foot control, it will continue to sew in the normal way. Then when I get to the end of the seam, just repeat the process and just hold the reverse button down to secure the stitches. Now here's the really exciting part about this machine. You can now use the automatic thread cutter to cut those threads at the touch of a button. So if I press the button with the scissor symbol on it, the machine will automatically cut the threads for me and all I need to do then is just remove the fabric from the machine and the threads are neatly pulled through to the wrong side of the fabric and that's just one of those features that once you've had it you'll never want to go back it's so so useful and it just makes the process of sewing far less clunky instead of pulling the fabric off the machine and bringing it around the manual thread cutter here which you've got as an option if you want it you just press that button and your threads are snipped which is great the other way you can secure your stitches is by using the target button or the fixed stitch. So if I sew a row of stitches and then I don't want to reverse stitch, I just want to secure the stitches on the spot, I can just press the target button and when I sew, it will sew a few stitches on the spot to secure it. And then I can use the scissors button again to snip those threads. And when I remove it from the machine, you can see that's lovely and neat. There's no double stitching there. And again, the threads have been pulled to the wrong side of the fabric. With the target stitch as well, you can use that with a decorative stitch. So if I choose a decorative stitch pattern, I'm just going to select number 33, which is a pretty pattern that I like. I'll start stitching that out and then when I press the target button it will make sure, even if I press it while I'm mid stitch, it will make sure that the last full pattern is completed. So you can see there it made sure that last pattern was completed. I can press the scissors button and everything is neatly finished. So I just want to show you some of the other really practical features on this machine that really help with your sewing. The first one is needle up down. So this gives you the option whether to finish with the needle in the up position above the fabric or you can press the needle up down button and when you finish sewing the needle will finish in the fabric. So if I sew a row of stitches now when I stop and take my foot off the foot control, the needle is down in the fabric securing it. And that is so useful when you want to sew with precision and accuracy. You might be positioning some stitches just in the right place and you might want to be able to stop, lift the foot and just check everything's where it should be without fear of the fabric moving. Or you might want to be able to pivot a corner and you can do that by just turning the fabric like so and then lowering the foot and you can carry on sewing in the other direction. That's a feature I use all the time in my sewing. 
Another feature with this machine that's helpful with precision and accuracy is the fact that you've got a sliding speed control. So at the moment we're at the higher speed for sewing, but if I've got something that I want to really take my time with, I want to be very careful, and I don't want to run that risk of pushing my foot down too far on the foot control and it running away with me, I can just move that sliding speed control down to the slowest speed, and no matter how hard I press on the foot control now, the machine will only so at its slowest speed. So I'm just going to show you that now. So my foot was right down on the foot control, but that was as fast as it was going to go. And then if I want to return to my normal sewing speed, I just slide it back up to the top speed. The other option I've got as well is if I want to give my foot a rest, um, if I need to give my ankle a break and I just don't want to use the foot control for sewing, I can remove it and then I can use the stop start button to start and stop sewing. So I just press it once to start and press it again to stop. And that's really useful and can be used again in conjunction with that sliding speed control. If you want to really slow things down, you can move it down to that lowest speed and use the start stop button without the foot control. One of the great things about the 5060 QDC is how many additional stitches you get with the machine. So you get 60 stitches and the extra stitches you get in comparison to the lower end models aren't just decorative stitches, you get additional utility stitches too. So these are stitches that are required to complete those standard sewing tasks and having more options for those makes them easier and helps you to get more professional results. So you get a wider range of buttons and holes which means you can sew different types of fabric more easily and get good results with those buttonholes on different types of fabric more easily and you've also got the different types of buttonhole that are recommended for different types of garments. You also get more applique stitches which makes navigating around the appliques easier and again is useful for when you're working with different thicknesses of fabric. Plus you get a knit stitch which enables you to finish the seams on knit fabrics if you haven't got an overlocker. So that just gives you a feel for how this can make your sewing a lot more easy and then you've also got those lovely decorative stitches for when you want to get creative too. Choosing the different stitches is easy and we do this by using these arrows here and referring to the control panel. The first number on the control panel tells us which stitch we've selected and above that it also recommends the foot to be used with that particular stitch. The next number tells us the stitch width in millimetres and the next one tells us the stitch length in millimetres. So if I want to choose a different stitch I can just use this arrow, the up arrow here, to increase the number and you'll notice that the machine is automatically setting the recommended stitch width and stitch length for each of those stitches. I can override that if I want to and I'll show you how to do that later but for now I just want to show you how to select the different stitches. So I can work my way through the numbers like so but you might be thinking oh it would take you a long time to get to number 59 and that's where we can use the across arrow here. If I press that and just select that first digit, I can change that. And then if I want to ch change the second digit, I just move the arrow across and I can do that there. And that enables me to just jump down by tens rather than just working in units. If I want to change the stitch width, I just move the cursor across. And again, I can increase that stitch width or I can decrease it. So you might want to do that on some of the decorative stitches perhaps, or you might want to do a really wide zigzag stitch to cover an area on a fabric. So that's how you alter that. And then again, you just move across to the stitch length. And if you're sewing a tacking stitch, for example, you might want to make that really long, or you might want to reduce the length if you want to sew some very tight stitches to secure something, for example. I often do very short stitches at the end of a dart um, just to secure that. So you've got that option there as well. 
One of my favorite things about this machine is how many presser feet you get with it. You get a whopping 10 feet with this machine and we'll have a closer look at those later. But for now, I just wanted to show you how easy it is to change the feet. If you feel at the back of the needle bar, there's a black button, just press that in and the foot will be released. And then to replace it with an alternative foot, just line the bar on top of the foot up with the groove on the bottom of the needle bar, then lower the needle bar down and it'll click into place. I also wanted to show you while we're here the fact that this machine's got 15 different needle positions so you can actually move the needle to the left or to the right. All you need to do is select a straight stitch and then go to the stitch width option and I can use the up arrow to move the needle to the right and I can use the down arrow to move the needle to the left. And you might be thinking, well, when would I need to do that? But there are so many times when this is a really useful feature to have. One such example is if you're sewing a zip. So if I position a zip under the zipper foot like so, I might want to get those stitches just a little bit closer to the teeth. And in that case, I can just use the down arrow and move it across. You also might be sewing piping or you might just be doing some top stitching on a project and have a really specific position that you want those stitches to be in. And having the ability to move the needle just makes that so much easier and gives you so many more options. There's a handy accessory case for storing feet and bobbins. And this can also be removed from the machine, which creates what's called a free arm. And this enables you to sew in the round much more easily. So if you're sewing a sleeve or a cuff, for example, you can slide it over the end of the sewing machine and sew in the round more easily. It reduces the risk of accidentally sewing that bottom layer of fabric because you'll just be able to work on the top layer and work your way around the seam. When the accessory tray is removed, it also gives you the opportunity to attach the free extension table, which is included with the 5060 QDC. Very often you need to purchase these separately, but it's included with this machine and it massively increases your work area. So if you're working on a bigger project like a quilt or a coat, it gives you much more space to maneuver the fabric. And it also gives you more support with that heavy fabric as you work with it, rather than it hanging off, off the front of the machine and you're running the risk of things being distorted or the fabric being stretched you've got that extra space there to support it as you work and it just makes everything so much easier. At the back of the machine there's an option to move a lever across and drop the feed dogs beneath the needle plate so if I just move that across you'll see the feed dogs have dropped beneath the needle plate and that allows me to sew and move the fabric in any direction so that I can sew with free motion embroidery, effectively drawing with the thread. To re-engage the feed dogs, I just move the lever back to the original position and turn the hand wheel towards me. So if you're impressed with all the brilliant features on this machine, click the link to have a closer look on our website or purchase it. In the box you'll find everything you would expect, a detailed instruction manual, the foot control, the free extension table and hard cover, some spare bobbins, needles, different size spool caps, a screwdriver, an unpicker, all the usual bits and bobs are there, but you'll also find those 10 feet. So the six standard feet you'll find are the standard or zigzag foot, an overcasting foot for neatening edges, the automatic one-step buttonhole foot, a blind hem foot, a zipper foot and a satin stitch foot. Then you'll also find a bonus pack which includes an additional four feet which would be quite a big investment to purchase separately but are included with this machine and this is one of the reasons why it's such great value. So in that bonus pack you'll find a walking foot which is brilliant if you're into patchwork or quilting because it feeds the multiple layers of fabric through the machine evenly and stops them from running away from one another. However if you're a dressmaker like me a 
walking foot is also incredibly useful for you as well. If you're working with tricky fabrics like a slippery satin or a crepe de chine or a velvet or a stretch fabric like a jersey, the walking foot will help to feed those fabrics through the machine evenly and get you really professional results and prevent any sort of mishaps with the fabrics running away from one another. You'll also find a quarter inch foot, which again for patchwork and quilting is really important for that precision and accuracy with those seams. But as a dressmaker, I also find that foot really useful when I'm working with very narrow pieces of fabric. For example, if I'm sewing a binding and or if I just want to sew a quarter inch, perhaps a quarter inch seam it's really useful for those tasks too. You'll also find a darning foot, which allows you to sew free motion embroidery and an open toe satin stitch foot or a craft foot, plus a fabric guide to help you feed the fabric through the machine. So that bonus pack really is excellent value for money. And there is so much there to get you started and to really start stretching those sewing skills. However, you might decide that you want to take them even further and you might want to try a piping foot or a gathering foot or any of the other lovely feet that you can buy separately for this machine. And if that's the case, just click the link and visit our website and you'll find a really wide range of feet and accessories compatible with this machine. Just look for the Janome Category B feet and accessories and don't hesitate to give us a shout if you need any help at all. That's what we're here for. I've given you a good overview of the Janome 5060 QDC, but if you've got any questions or want any more information, don't hesitate to get in touch. Even if you purchase the machine from us, we're always here to support you. All of our machines come with a full manufacturer's warranty, so that's two years with this machine. And in the unlikely event that you have a problem, don't hesitate to get in touch. We're always happy to help. Often we can resolve any issues over the phone, but if that's not the case, we'll collect the machine and organise everything for you. We offer the best prices, but if you do see it cheaper anywhere else, don't hesitate to get in touch and we'll be happy to help. And once you place your order, the machine will be delivered by courier the next working day with a dedicated one hour time slot so you know exactly when to expect it. I hope you're feeling excited about your new machine and thanks for watching.